Hello, one and all, to another episode of Deep Lore. Today, we're going to be discussing the conspiracy and mystery around the firefighter's ghostly handprint. This mystery happened in the 1920s in Chicago. In one of the fire stations, there was a window that contained a black hand that couldn't be scraped or cleaned off, even with strong solvents. The hand on the window was believed to be that of Francis Levy. The date was April 18th, 1924. Francis Levy was a firefighter for the Chicago Fire Department. He was doing a routine clean around the station and was in the process of cleaning the window in question. He abruptly stopped as he was cleaning the window, leant against it, and the other people in the fire department overheard him say that he had the strangest feeling that he was going to die on that day. Very soon after he said this, a streetcar conductor noticed flames coming out of a building a few blocks away from him. This building was four stories tall and it was known as Curran's Hall and it was up in flames. The off-duty conductor pulled the fire alarm and the Chicago Police Department acted. Francis Leve was one of the acting firefighters who arrived on the scene. The flames were getting out of control and beginning to span the height of the building and almost connecting to other buildings nearby. Francis was one of nine people who went inside to tackle the fire while the others remained outside spraying down the building. They did not have a breathing apparatus, so they took it in turns passing the hose to each other before running to the windows to get fresh air before charging back into the flames. People noticed some strange things about the fire that didn't make it seem like a usual um, brick and wood fire. They noticed flames almost run downstairs as if it was burning liquid. About half an hour into the firefight, the structure of the building itself was weakened and the roof collapsed in onto the building. Those that were inside the building was crushed by falling masonry, and the firefighters, even outside battling the blaze, were injured as the building fell down and pushed the outside walls towards them. It also crushed several people, men in the ladders and people on the engines. About an hour after the fire first started, or about half an hour after the collapse, the fire was extinguished. There was then a call to all rescue agencies in the Chicago area to come and help rescue survivors. In total, nine firefighters were killed in the collapse, including Francis Levy. 20 firefighters were injured and one civilian was also killed. It was then a day after the incident happened where something strange was noticed on the window in the fire station. It seemed like just a normal stain at first. The staff tried to wash it off, scrub it off, and scratch it, but nothing would remove it. Over the following days, the stain started to expand and become clearer as to what it was, and within a few days it resembled a handprint. This was on the same spot that Francis Levy had felt the weird feeling that he was going to die as he was cleaning this window just a day before. People really didn't know what to do with this. Some people tried using uh, chemical solvents to get rid of it. Others tried to hire window cleaners to try and use uh, strong equipment to remove it, but nothing would actually get rid of the handprint itself. They decided that they should remove the glass pane and put a new one in to get rid of the print. However, at this point, the fire station and the people there decided that it probably wasn't worth removing the glass, and they believed that it was there for a reason, and it's best for them not to mess with it or remove it. The handprint then stayed there for over 20 years as a reminder for firefighters to always remember that the job is dangerous, and there's always a chance that this might be their last Um, incident that they're going to. So the handprint remained there until 1944, so 22 years. 
However, one morning in 1944, a paper boy was doing his rounds when he threw a morning newspaper through the window, smashing it and destroying the handprint. I've done some research onto this, and it seems like the date that the window got smashed in 1944 was April the 18th, which is the same date that he was cleaning the window before he had this apparition. So that's a bit of a strange coincidence if that is the true date that the window was destroyed. Now, the fire itself was discovered to be arson um, to try and claim on the insurance, uh, and it was by a sporting goods store that was on the second floor of the building. They were tried and convicted of arson and murder in the end. And that pretty much concludes this conspiracy slash mystery. Um, I assume that they've put another window in uh, after the incident, and the fact that there's no writing about the handprint reappearing on that window, it must have just been only present on the authentic original window. It's a very interesting mystery. Um, it's been in the conspiracy icebergs, which sometimes the things on the icebergs themselves aren't really classified as conspiracies, but they're like mysteries of the world. Um, and this, I think, falls into one of those categories. But I'd love to hear what you think about this. Was it a strange mark from him that was left after he cleaned the windows? Or was it his ghost himself reminding the firefighters to stay humble? Thank you very much for watching this episode of Deep Lore. I hope you learnt something today. If you liked it, leave a like, and if you want, subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. We're going to be descending the conspiracy iceberg, and I'd love for you to come along with me.